Hello to the chicos, hello to the chicas. Welcome back to me versus the Grandmasters, all oh, the legends. Well, nah, this is just me versus Grandmasters. Uh, I've started this series a while ago and I haven't added anything new to it. And although the first episode wasn't particularly popular, I'm curious to see how it will go. So we'll give it another red hot go. Um, this uh, time around, I'm going to show you four games which I played as part of an almost 10 or 12 games Blitz match series against uh, a Turkish GM called Kamil Kem uh, Arandi, something along the lines of them. Kamil Kem is definitely his first two names, but he has got four of those. And at the time when we played the game, his FIDE rating was 2554. Um, it was a very, very fascinating match to play against the guy because our styles are very, very much uh, similar in that we both really like to go for wild complications, awesome tactical skirmishes and the like. And uh, although um, because of I'm vain and uh, miserably proud, I mostly chose games that I won. Uh, for historical accuracy's sake, I need to state that he actually defeated me. Um, I can't remember the score. It wasn't a large margin, but he actually did beat me. But um, like I said, since I'm very vain and it is my channel, I decided to mostly showcase... Uh, some of my victories, although I will show you something in the end just to counterbalance that. So, first game, let's go with this Queen's uh, Gambit declined. That was a bit of a theme of the match and uh, I got the better of him in multiple games in this one. Um, here he actually misplayed the opening really badly by uh, um, omitting here, uh, I think, 96 first. Yeah, he did something weird. Yeah, he didn't play knight c6 first. So uh, he had some troubles here with connecting pieces because um, he played here knight e4, but he's already up for some trouble here because bishop takes c5 is met by b4. So um, something went uh, amiss here for him. Um, yeah, knight c6 is, is mainline theory. Anyway, so he goes there, a3, knight e4. So now he had to switch a little bit tactics. And here I missed a beautiful move. And by the way, this is a very important think that I did speak about this a lot in previous videos blitz is in my opinion predominantly a tool to practice openings and it shouldn't be taken seriously at all and one of the main reasons for that is is because sometimes when I play a really really good blitz game or a game I thought was really good and then I have a look at it and I have a look at how many mistakes, blunders, blah, 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 were made in it. And I have a look at what kind of IDs and tactics were missed. And I, and I realized that it was just a cluster disaster of Blunderfest, which I thought before that was a brilliant creation. And I realized that if it had been a proper time control game, I would not have missed about 85% of those tactics that I wasn't even aware they existed when I played the three or five minute blitz game. So for example, here, there's no way I would have missed b4, knight takes c3, queen c2, followed by take back on c3 and totally winning for white. And so these are those, those little things that um, always make me want to think, well, what's even the point of uh, me engaging with blitz when I really enjoy the depth of chess? The, the You know, when you actually get to sit down, calculate something and just appreciate the beauty of your hard, intense work when you invest 10, 15 minutes into an idea and then it comes to fruition. And let's face it, B4 is not a complex idea. And even this I missed very, very simply because I just thought, oh, I can't do that because of knight C3. So I didn't even look as far as a move and a half and I would have found it. Anyway, rook C3, take, take, rook D8. Things are not going well here at all. Uh, oopsie daisy, no, no, that never happened. I also missed here um, B4, I believe. But uh, I was a bit scared, I think, maybe the consequences of this. Although, to be perfectly honest, after knight D2, this is just winning for white, so I don't know. Maybe I didn't see it, yet another thing. Play bishop D3, takes, takes, bishop I3. And that was the moment in the game when I went like, nah. This can't be right, because as much as this is a blitz game and, um, you know, we miss lots of different uh, tactics, I went like, there is no way that an army that has pieces like this and a king that has no defender whatsoever, like you cut the board between E and D file half and there are no black pieces here. I said to myself, if this is right, yeah, 
there is no justice in chess. And soon I hit upon the correct idea, which was bishop c7, b6. However, here I did miss a very cool point again, which is pretty kindergarten, and that was that after takes takes here, I have check here. And that is just really, really brutal, man. Because if king takes, then I check the bishop down and I'm a full rook up. And uh, if the king goes here, then after castles, queen c3, knight g5, uh, it's essentially mate in a very few moves. So that was missed. But luckily, I did see that queen c2 was going to win for me anyway. Because now the rook had to go. Castles. And here I saw already the winning tactic, which was that no matter where the bishop went, I will be able to take b6 and that actually decided the game like so take 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 and uh, in the end the white bishop takes all the glory taking the pawn first and then trapping the rook on a8 so that was a pretty sweet victory he had to sack a piece there and then yeah i'm just uh even backering mated him in the end i was pretty happy with this one then we had this one now that this is a game that i want to show you because i really like the spirit in which I play this black. He chucked at me this very weird Jabava kind of London where he played e3 and then h4. Now, I personally think every single time I see a system which is based on this uh, early h4 idea but without the ability to be able to back it up with queen d2 bishop h6, I always think that this is garbage. Now, also. For the record, I didn't choose to allow h5 because I'm very cocky and I think that, um, or I thought back then, I still do, that you should allow this to happen because it's just a waste of time because they will never meet you there. But pawn h6 is a very, very good response, a very calm and measured response because then h5, g5 is all the time just brilliant for us. And if they don't do that, well, then this king is no longer casting here really, or if it is, it's going to be a bit iffy. But like I said, I went cocky again allowed h5 and then I took back with the f and I went like haha I'm gonna attack you even on the king side baby along the f file he took I uh, know he played knight f3 knight c6 bishop e2 so now he's trying to develop and castle here so yeah combining with this with uh, knight e5 this was a bit unfortunate actually because um, now after queen b6 d4 and b2 are both hanging so I was already quite happy about this position, except for the fact that knight a4 here is actually quite hurtful. But um, it's still it's still quite playable. Uh, unfortunate though, because uh, take, take, and then queen b6 is a whole lot better. Because then knight a4, I can take this. So it's one of those cases when releasing the tension actually does yield benefits, and therefore it needs to be done. Anyway, he missed this event g4, g5, because he was still in this gunko attack um, yeah, idea. But here he's now falling apart big time. And uh, this is actually a game-losing blunder. And this is a very typical thing in chess, and a lot of people tend to uh, fall victim of this. And that is, um, is the sideways effect of chess pieces. So here I actually played knight e5, which wasn't even the best move. But it's good enough to win the game with the idea that now my queen is covering this dude here. So if he takes this, I take back and I will just simply mow down everything. So he takes, I take, take back, I take and pawn up, king is dead, all good. So instead he opted for uh, pawn takes e5, but it's even worse because now bishop takes g4. And if queen takes back, I have got queen takes b2, queen e6, check rook f7. And there are two pieces hanging. The game is over. He came here. But the same situation occurred, queen e4, queen b2, and, uh, wow. And the two pieces hanging uh, was just too much for white. He castled, but uh, resigned shortly after queen c3. A couple of more moves were played, and he gave up. And here comes my favorite game from the batch. Actually, one of my favorite. Um, this was absolute bonkers. I played this game. This was towards the end of our match, and we have already had... A number of uh, queens can be declines and so oh no 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 and so i pre-moved here bishop f4 and instead of playing bishop e7 he actually went knight d7 against which bishop f4 is not a good move at all so i did that and he took me and i'm like bugger now this is suboptimal because the bishop on f4 often falls for knight d5 with the temple 
Um, so yeah, that's just something to, to bear in mind. For example, uh, e3, b5, knight takes, bishop, b4, back, knight, d5 is one of those motifs that uh, could uh, come to play. But just in general, I didn't really like this whole story. So I went like, yeah, nah, this is Blitz Owl. And this is the other way how I occasionally like to play Blitz. And that is where I try to channel my inner Tal. If you know what I mean. Like oftentimes when I go like, okay, well, this was meant to be practicing my openings, mostly, primo, whatever happened. Let's go and gunk hole. And boy, gunk hole this went. Queen C2, B5, and I'm like, yeah, mate, bring it on. Castles. And it, it's horrible. Like, I'm not teaching you here or not even trying to tell you that this is the way to play chess. It's not. But it's tremendous fun. It is tremendous fun. Here after bishop B7, I would have been in all kinds of trouble because the pawn is um, hanging and e5, knight, d5 is just not playable. But he luckily, he played c6, which is a bit of a soft move and actually does cause a lot of trouble for black himself because now the bishop can come into d6, denying castling. So that was the first time in the game when I went like, okay, maybe we have got something here to work with. He plays knight there, I push e5 in. Knight d5, h4. Now this is a stock standard motif in the Gala Gambit, which is a similar opening to this, where white plays h4 to support the knight on g5, but also to bring the rook up. Sadly for me, I am one move too late to the parte, because um, now c3 is not defensible. Having said that, here I again miss a tactic, bishop takes c4, <clears throat> which would have equalized on the spot. I totally missed that. Instead, I went knight g5 because <clears throat> gunko it is. Knight takes c3, rook h3. Not how, and once again, I don't want to say that this is how you play chess. This is not. But the spirit of the way how it's played is just forward like there was no tomorrow. Forward, Kazimirovich was uh, Tolush, Tal's uh, trainer's uh, motto. Always forward. Takes. Okay, I had to take it back. Right, but only because now I can come forward here too. And from here on, I'm minus four, by the way. Best move for black is pawn f5, which shatters all my hopes of kingside attack. I've got nothing. But from here on, black is going to be constantly on the back foot as a result of my relentless attack. I really did enjoy myself. Check this out, check here. And I'm like, mm, okay, I will sneak in this cheeky little queen move because if they take here queen g7 and all of a sudden, the rook is gone. And although that will only restore material parity, but then the black king will be very, very exposed, no matter what. Not to mention the fact that if they play a doozy, I think it's rook f3. Right? And now mate is not stoppable. Not bad. So he didn't take my g5, he played queen d7 to stop me going in, but now. Once again, note how I'm an exchange down, knight hanging, 70 million pawns. The only option that is never even a thought for the rest of the game, and in fact from this point on, is going back. Like, look at that. He plays queen d7, and I'm like, yeah, rook here. Thank you very much. Now the knight is not hanging because queen f8, rook takes, and rook takes is a breathtakingly beautiful mate. So he goes f5, and I'm like, yep, no, I'm turning on the heat, baby. And this is basically, by the way, the, ulti the ultimate way to play chess when you are losing. It's to constantly create problems to your, to your opponent. Constantly make a threat, create problems, play intimidating chess. Always go forward. Don't let them catch their breath. He plays bishop b7, and after h takes g6, all of a sudden white is already winning. And I do have one big regret about how the game ended, because after castles g7, rook g8, knight e6, everything is perfect for white here. Like these moves are best. Rook takes f5 included, which is again, no, look at that. Like knight is hanging, nah, whatever, mate. Be my guest, take what you want. And if queen takes, this is a breathtaking idea, actually. Queen takes, 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 check here, takes, takes, and bishop f8. Knight here, bishop takes. And uh, the end game is winning for white because of the mass of pawns will start rolling in. Not bad, eh? Not bad for a blitz game. And I actually did see this when I played here with f5. What I didn't see, and I'm really, really regretting that, is that in this position, 
I actually had a one move knockout with the very subtle G3. Such a beautiful tiny little move when seemingly everything is hanging. And now bishop h3 win is uh, simply unstoppable. It is simply unstoppable. I played instead the total doozy queen takes of uh, h7. And now I was made to work hard still after takes, 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 takes and takes. But uh, truth to be told, I managed to win this end game by uh, marching my pawns up. And again, by the way, the technique is still actually quite noteworthy in my opinion. So I played g3, he drops back. Bishop c5. I love this move because it simplifies the position to something that I can just play as a as a routine thing because it's an identical same color bishop ending with three connected pass pawns and the disaster of a bishop excuse me here so I can just roll pawns up in his face give a check bring the king up and easy win so I was actually very happy with this bishop c5 move and know that the pin is already pending um, I didn't do it lord knows why but I just rolled the pawns up and it's actually mate already so it's promotes to queen fold by queen d6 mate unstoppable and the game is over and just so that I can provide a very nice twist to the story, I will show you how he absolutely butchered me in one of my favorite openings. I'm playing black here and I really like the, this uh, uh, line in the browser with bishop d7 b5. However, here I forgot my theory because almost everyone here plays knight takes c6 with the idea of queen e1 so that they can sell this 95 trick which is based on this idea of takes takes check and the bishop drops it's all theory b4 is a mistake here bishop e7 and uh, rook a7 are theoretical moves anyway he plays knight f3 which i remember that it's not a great move but i forgot how to play against it and i also forgot what the purpose of the move was usually when the knight moves from d4 in this system it's because black's knight on c6 is a bit clumsy and usually in this setup black can't wait to take and then put the bishop on that long diagonal so when they play knight f3 i just uh, forgot about what i was meant to do which was either b4 or bishop e7 and i played h5 which is basically a move that anticipates f5 in which case the bishop often can come out here but he has no intention whatsoever to play um, f5 here and I just didn't realize that so he played he g3 which again in my head was selling me f5 because the idea behind g3 is that then he goes to bishop h3 and attacks this pawn so I'm still in that oh yeah um, f5 is coming next uh, mindset so I play queen c5 so that my piece can jump into e5 so for example e5 uh, f5 knight e5 and then after takes takes I have a Picasso painting of a beauty I thought not quite but yeah I thought that that would be awesome and here came the cold shower man he played e5 and all of a sudden I'm like wowzers and just so that you understand my pain I'm going to show you this game from black's point of view I'm like okay there is a tiny little checkmate here and even here, I didn't quite realize the gravity of the situation because I'm like, oh yeah, I will just sack f6, I will go d5, then I go b4, and I'm just going to just march up like mad. And how barely did I land the pawn on d5, and the knight already arrived on e4, and that was when I went like, aha, that's why you are the GM, and I am not because I totally forgot about this so didn't even look at this as a possibility and now it's done dusted I'm dead I played queen back check king d8 knight g5 bishop e8 not the back rank fest nothing like when the inventor of the theme back rank fest actually models what it looks like to play like absolute garbage he plays bishop h3 introducing various kinds of threats on uh, these three pawns of course, um, I fell for the most obvious one. I played knight a5 here, trying to cover the e6 pawn and also bringing the knight into c4, except that, uh, yeah, nah. Knight takes d5, and when this move landed on my board, I just, yeah, I was so disgusted with myself, I resigned instantly. Needless to say that after takes, queen takes d5, mm, yeah, this is, this is not looking pretty. So... Yeah, folks, this this was uh, this was my game against Kamil Khan, the Turkish GM. 
Um, and this was a series of a 12 game match. Actually, we played it more than a year ago, but um, who cares? Uh, I think it's uh, still good fun to bring up these games. Uh, they're good fun to play too, because uh, you're playing against someone clearly stronger than you. So there's a lot of opportunity there to learn and to take something away from these games. Um, we did have our fair share of fun and like I have demonstrated it to you, the majority of the games actually featured pretty epic fireworks. And um, so apart from the odd learning moments here and there about openings, we also had a bit of a fun, as I said before, to channel our inner Tal, uh, Tals. So yeah, that was great fun. I hope you guys liked it. I will be back with more soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.